This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Hello and welcome back to The Watch Guys. I hope you are safe and well. This week, I've got a cracker of a Rolex for you, probably one of my all-time favourite Rolexes, apart from the Kermit. This is one of the earliest ones in my collection. It's monstrous, it's incredible, it's huge, and it's record-breaking. That's right, folks, this week's watch is the Rolex Deep Sea Deep Blue or D-Blue. Welcome everyone to the Rolex Deep Sea Deep Blue or D Blue, however you'd like to pronounce it. It's named after the graduated blue to black dial that evokes the colour change from the surface of the ocean to the blackness of extreme depth. If you're into Rolex and you can pretty much tell that I definitely am, then this watch has to be in your collection. It's the daddy, the big boy, the ultimate dive watch, and it's the only watch I can remember in modern times that's achieved something extraordinary. It survived being on the wrist of film director James Cameron. Oh yeah, and it's dived to nearly 11,000 metres to the absolute bottom of the ocean at a place called Challenger Deep. But before we get fully into this episode, it's time for a wristwatch check, and under the black jumper this week, we have the Laurent Ferrier Micro Rotor Square. Yes, that's right, one of my recent acquisitions. There's a full episode on this if you want to check it out. It's a 41 millimeter steel watch, the first steel watch that Laurent Ferrier has ever made. And as you can see, it's got a beautiful blue dial, very simple, very elegant, and I'm wearing it a lot right now. But this week, it's all about this watch, the Rolex Deep Sea Deep Blue. I'm gonna tell you all about this watch, the history, the unboxing, why I love it, and why I think it should be in your collection. This original Deep Sea Deep Blue is reference 1166600. It was made in 2017. It features the 3135 movement. It's self-winding. It has a 44 millimeter case made of oyster steel and a case back of titanium. Let's just bathe in its magnificent, massive beauty. At 44 millimeters, this is a big, heavy watch on the wrist and if you're unlucky enough to be swallowed by a shark while diving, this watch will exact your revenge by swiftly taking the shark to the bottom. This one is actually the original Deep Sea, launched in 2014, which somehow I prefer because it was one of the first Rolexes that I bought, and it got me started in the world of Rolex collecting. But even I will admit that the second generation is better in nearly all respects. As you can see from the dial, the Deep Sea is rated to 3,900 meters. And to cope with the three tons of pressure that would be exerted on the watch at that depth, Rolex developed the ring lock system, which consists of a 5.5 millimeter domed crystal, nitrogen allowed steel ring that sits inside the case, and a 5.33 millimeter thick case back made from titanium. The trip lock winding crown has three seals and a crown guard to make it watertight. And of course, you've got that famous helium escape valve first seen in 1967, which allows pressure buildup in the watch case to escape during a saturation diver's decompression. Check out this Cerachrome bezel with its platinum coated numerals that make it easy to read underwater, and it's virtually scratch proof. The bezel also has knurled edges to make it easier to rotate whilst wearing gloves. And if you're worried about being able to read the dial in the blackness of the ocean, don't be because you've got super cool chromolite hour markers and hands. I mean, just look how nice that is. And now that we know a little bit more about this watch, let's go into the history of the Sea Dweller and the Deep Sea. Rolex began experimenting with watches for much deeper depths than the Submariner would go to. And in 1960, they actually put a Deep Sea Special model on the outside of the Bathyscape Trieste, which was piloted by the US Navy's Don Walsh and oceanographer Jean-Luc, oh sorry, Jacques Picard. And when they descended deep to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, which is a depth of 10,916 meters, which is 37,800 feet, on the outside of the Bathyscape was a deep sea special Rolex, which fortunately survived. So to cope with those extreme depths and to prevent the crystals being popped out, Rolex began experimenting with a new piece of technology called the helium escape valve. This was initially put on Submariners, but then in 1967, Rolex launched a brand new model, the Sea Dweller. 
This was reference 1665. It's now known as the double red because it's got two lines of red writing on the dial. In 2008, Rolex launched the Deep Seed line of Sea Dweller. So this was like a super pumped up Arnold Schwarzenegger version of the Sea Dweller. This could descend to a scarcely believable 12,800 feet, three times the previous depth of the Sea Dweller. And this monster had a five millimeter thick sapphire crystal, cerachrome bezel and titanium case back. This was the daddy of dive watches. On the 26th of March, 2012, James Cameron descended to the deepest part of the ocean, the Mariana Trench, just like Walsh and Picard did in the 60s at a depth of 10,908 meters, which is 35,787 feet. And that's 6,000 feet taller than Mount Everest. He was wearing a deep sea, and he also had the prototype deep sea challenge diver's watch attached to the manipulator arm of the submersible. The successful completion of the Rolex Deep Sea Challenge, a magnificent horological achievement, led to the commemorative deep blue dial version of the Deep Sea that you see here. Cameron's dive was actually less deep than that of the Trieste with Walsh and Picard, and was subsequently beaten by Victor Vescovo in 2019. Perhaps it's time for Rolex to return to the Mariana Trench and reclaim the record. In 2018, four years after the launch of the original James Cameron, Rolex updated the watch to the reference 126660 with the new movement, the 3235, which allowed for a slightly thinner case, larger lugs at 22mm, and it helped balance out the 44mm case. It also meant a wider bracelet and clasp, which allowed the bracelet to sit flat against the case for the first time. The new movement increased the power reserve to 70 hours. And these subtle changes made a big difference in terms of comfort but the main difference was how much more balanced it was on the wrist. Today, as you can see in the Rolex range, there are two sea dwellers and two deep seas. In terms of sea dwellers, there's the makes no sense at all two-tone version, and then also the red writing anniversary sea dweller. And for the deep sea, you've got the classic black dial, and of course, the James Cameron. And now it's time to enter Unboxo Vision. So let's check out what's in the box of this Rolex deep sea deep blue. Well, straight away you can see that it comes in the classic slightly off yellow Rolex cardboard box. Inside there you can see the receipt from Michael Matthews, uh, paid £11,500 for this watch. Inside the familiar green plastic ruche leather effect Rolex box, there's the watch and there's the original sales tag. And then inside the secret pocket we have the warranty card, we've got the worldwide service book, and we've got the Rolex Deep Sea manual telling you exactly how to use the watch and explaining in detail how the helium escape valve works. So no major thrills at all for such a record-breaking cool watch, just the standard packaging and there you go. But you'd almost expect no less from Rolex. So why was this the third Rolex in my collection and why do I love it so much? Well, I mean, come on, it's the boss, it's the daddy, it's the big guy, it's the top of the range. It's one of the most significant Rolexes that's ever been created. It's surely the world's greatest dive watch and a real Rolex icon. It does wear massive on the wrist, so there's no chance of wearing a dress shirt with this one unless they're custom made. It's heavy, so you know you're wearing it. It's got that domed crystal. And I really like watches that are associated with feats of human endeavor and endurance. I mean, come on, this watch has been to the very depths of the ocean. Would I wear it in the shower? Of course not. I love the sheer stupidity of wearing a watch that can survive at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, and yet I can't bear to get it wet. The first thing you notice holding one of these in your hand is how heavy it is and how large it is overall. You can feel every millimeter of its 44 millimeters and also just look, just look at how thick it is. It feels super industrial, it feels like a proper workhorse, a proper tool watch and something that would survive a nuclear missile blast. The single directional bezel moves round with a satisfying beautiful Rolex click. Probably the only thing you'd criticize the dial for is the fact that there's five lines of text in the lower portion, so it is pretty crowded in there. That unique blue to black graduated dial is sublime and a real signature of the watch, and the Amazon tree frog green lettering, based on the same hue as Cameron's submersible, just makes it 
even more special looking. Those larger hands and hour markers make it easier to see in low light conditions, and the chroma light luminescence makes the dial come alive in the dark. There's the helium escape valve, which fortunately is still popped in, because of course this watch receives no tough treatment whatsoever. I think the maximum depth that it has gone to is probably two meters, and the number of times this watch has been submerged in water can be counted on the fingers of someone who's stolen something in Saudi Arabia. This is the first generation of the Deep Sea Deep Blue. I do have both, but this one has a special place in my heart because it really helped me get into Rolex. Yes, I know the Gen 2 is technically and aesthetically better, but I just don't care. This is the one that gets all the wearing. It's stupidly tall on the wrist, and yes, it's heavy, and therefore if the bracelet isn't tight, it will loll on your wrist. But every time you check the time, it feels like you're about to embark on an expedition. I just love the sheer chunkiness of it, the go anywhere-ness of it, and I think that dial, that beautiful blue to black graduation with the green touches, just so iconic and super, super cool. And since it is such a chunky mother, let's check out how much it actually weighs. Wow, it weighs 212 grams. That's more than the solid gold green dial Daytona. How and where did I buy it? Well, I actually secured this one from a retailer in Bournemouth called Michael Matthews. The second gen version that I've got was of course secured as part of my relationship with Langs in Southampton. The overwhelming feeling when you're holding a deep sea deep blue is of solidity. This thing is going nowhere. It will certainly outlive me and it will probably outlive the human race. It's just this and the cockroaches left behind. Well, there you go. This is the magnificent Rolex Deep Sea Deep Blue or D Blue, whichever you want to call it. One of the most special Rolexes that you can still buy. If you haven't got one, put your name down and try and get one now because this is one of the real icons and I think in the future will be an absolute classic. Thank you for watching this week's episode of The Watch Guys on the Rolex Deep Sea Deep Blue. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I'm doing on The Watch Guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode next week.